watching my Python standard library video explainer series. And this time we're going to talk about a built-in type that people don't talk about very much, which is bytes. So you probably know, or you hopefully know, that um, at the end of the day, information is represented in bytes. Um, but we also have characters. So what is the relationship between these? In a string, if I say s equals a, b, c, d, then each of these characters can actually, at least in our Unicode UTF-8 encoding world, be represented by one, two, three, or four bytes. As it happens, each of these characters, because they exist in ASCII, are represented by one byte apiece. But there are other characters, let's say if I say s equals, and here I'm in Israel, so I'll say shalom, each of these characters in Hebrew is represented by two bytes. And if I, because I recently went to Beijing, if I say here Beijing, so each of these characters is represented by three bytes apiece. Now to us in the world of strings, we say, okay, I've got characters, who really cares? And I can say len of s now, and it's gonna say two. There are two characters in that string. But sometimes, especially when dealing with binary data, we have to be dealing with bytes. We can't start messing with characters. Often we can't start messing with characters. If I read in a PDF file, I can't expect it to be in UTF-8 format with characters. It is simply containing a stream of bytes. And so the bytes type in Python is meant to take care of this for us. So how do I create a bytes? Well, I can say, you know, uh, uh, x equals bytes of a, b, c, d. And now I'm gonna create an object of type bytes. There's just one problem, which is it's not gonna work. It's gonna say, wait a second, you gave me a string. And remember, these are characters in the string, but you didn't tell me what it's gonna be encoded as. How am I supposed to turn? How am I supposed to translate between these characters into bytes? So I have to say here, oh yes, this is UTF-8. And now if I look at X, we will see that we indeed have what's called a byte string or bytes, right? So the type of X is gonna be bytes. We come to something called a byte string anyway. And you can see it has that little letter B there before the opening quote mark. So if you wanna create bytes from a string, one way to do it is to say, you know, here's the string and here's the encoding that we're gonna be using. You might remember from a previous video uh, that I showed that you can use encode and decode to move back and forth between strings and bytes. And you'll see that actually the arguments are almost identical here. In fact, we also have the errors argument. If we wanna make sure we can uh, translate from an encoding that there's no character for it. But I'm gonna ignore that mostly for now. Okay, so fine. So I have these bytes here. I took the characters A, B, C, D, and I took the bytes. Let's take a look at X. What is X? Well, it's a byte string. What can I do with a byte string? Well, actually I can do just about anything I can do with a string. So I can say X of zero, and I'm gonna get the first byte back. But look at what I get. I get an integer. So the way that Python represents bytes versus characters in a string is the byte string will always give me back integers. And those integers will be between zero and 255. Okay, that's what we've got in our bytes. So if I say x of one, x of two, x of three, right? So all of these things are just contained, oops, all these things are just containing um, integers. Now, can I change a byte string? No, just like a regular string, it's immutable. So x equals two, x of two equals 100. It won't allow me to do that. You can't support item assignment here. All right, so far so good. That's what we've got in terms of our bytes. Let's try something a little more complex. Let's take, instead of a, b, c, d, let's take shalom in Hebrew. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna move it to Hebrew, shalom. And now if I look at X, look what I've got. Wow, I've got a lot more going on here. In fact, with the len of X here, I've got eight. So the four Hebrew characters in Shalom are translated into eight bytes because in UTF-8, every Hebrew character is two bytes long. Now we don't see that at the character level because we're counting characters, working with characters. That's the beauty of UTF-8 and of Unicode. But at the byte level, oh, they are definitely there. And you can see here that's D7, A9, the backslash X is trying to tell us these are hex digits, hexadecimal digits. So what can I do with my bytes once I've got them? Well, one thing I might wanna do is um, turn them back into hexadecimal digits. So I can say X dot hex. And look what I get here. And now it's a little more readable, right? D7, A9, D7, 9C, and so on and so forth. What's going on? Why am I saying D7 all the time? Well, basically, remember, every character in Hebrew is two bytes. Every byte is two hex characters, all right? So, you know, every Hebrew character equals two bytes. Every byte equals two, you know, hex digits. So that means every Hebrew character is gonna be four hex digits. So that's what I've got here, D7A9, 
That's the first one. D7, 9C. The second one, D7, 95, and D7, 9D. All together, that's four characters in Hebrew represented by all these bytes, these 16 bytes. So if you want, you can turn them back into the hexadecimal characters, or hexadecimal digits, and then use them in that way. You can also say, for example, H equals X dot hex. I'll look at H here. And then I can say, also, bytes from hex H, and I'll get the byte string back. So if you ever have a bunch of hex digits in a string, so I can say here, for example, S equals 97, 98, 99. Um, yeah, let's just do that. And then I'm going to say here, uh, bytes from hex of S, and there we go, I get those bytes back. Now, that might look a little weird, right? But actually, these are hex. So it's not exactly the same as I had before with the 97. If I would say here, like, hex of 95, and hex of 96, and hex of 97. Now if I say uh, bytes from hex of, and let's say here, uh, 5f6061, now I should get my, well, OK. Well, not exactly the, the ABC that I was hoping for, but I guess I didn't remember exactly. I guess it's 61, 62, 63, or something like that. Here we go, 62, 63. There we go, it's easy as ABC, assuming you start from the right place. So if you have hex digits and you want to turn them into bytes, you can do that with from hex. If you have bytes and you want to see what the hex digits are, you can do that with hex. Just about anything else that you create with bytes, you can do the same stuff that you would do with strings. So if I say uh, x equals b of a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, j, k, l. So I can do x dot find of f. I want to find out where f is, right? Almost. What's wrong? What are you wrong? Argument should be integer or bytes like object, not stir. Meaning, you can't look for a string inside of a byte string. That would be ridiculous. But if I say there's a byte string f, oh, that's something different altogether. What if I say g in x? Once again, we're going to get that error. But if I say byte g in x, oh, that works just fine. What if I say here, right? Uh, what if I say here, like chr of 100? Right, so that's going to give me D. So what if I say here 100 in X? Is that going to be true? Yes, it's true. You can search for an integer in a byte string because at the end of the day, each of the bytes is an integer. So byte strings are very useful when you're dealing with binary data or if you're really trying to sort of do all sorts of manipulations. They are immutable. They uh, do all. They have all the methods that we do for strings, but they have these extra hex and from hex methods that you have to use if you want to move between sort of hexadecimal, hexadecimal digits and the byte and back. Um, if you're not dealing with binary data at all, you probably won't need to worry about byte strings at all. But when you do see them, or you do have to work with them, you have to keep in mind the encodings you're working with, whether you're with, working with strings or with bytes, and keeping that B prefix before the opening um, apostrophe, or before the opening quotes, just to avoid the sorts of errors that I showed you now. All right, that's it for this installment of the Python Standard Library Video in, uh, Explainer. I will be back very soon with another video. Comments, questions, suggestions, please get in touch with me. I love to hear from you, and every suggestion people have made, I've tried to keep in mind so as to improve the series even more. I'll see you around on the video explainer.